Greetings from EcoMaine's Waste to Energy Facility, Maine's only community-owned, non-profit waste management company. We process about one-third of Maine's trash and recycling here on the outskirts of Portland, and today we're going to show you what happens to the trash we receive every day. Our Waste to Energy Facility takes your household and commercial trash and turns it into ash and electricity. Pollution is created in the burning process, but with our state-of-the-art treatment, testing, and monitoring systems, the air leaving our building is even cleaner than our strict standards require us to be. But how does it all work? Well, you use materials every day that end up in the trash, from an old pair of shoes that have holes in the bottom, to kitty litter, chip bags, styrofoam, gum, sharps, and so much more. You can put your food waste into the trash as well, but if you have the opportunity to compost this valuable resource, please do. All the garbage items go into the bins on your curbside, transfer station, or drop-off locations, and are driven to our facility located near the Portland Airport. Just before coming into the tipping hall to be emptied, trucks pass over a scale and are weighed to see how much material is in each load. Once the trucks are weighed and the weight is recorded, the trucks continue on into our building. Inside the tipping hall is where trucks, large and small, drop off trash to be burned in our waste energy facility. About 250 trucks come from all over southern Maine and mid-coast areas to drop off residential and commercial trash each day from Monday through Saturday. We receive about 170,000 tons of waste each year, and it all gets burned inside our safe and secure building. The journey of trash turning into electricity and more really begins once the trash is dumped onto the floor. Our front loader pushes the garbage through the open bay doors into the trash bunker, or giant room of trash. We are a mass burning facility, which means all waste is processed as garbage and no sorting occurs. Whatever comes in, we burn which is why it's so important for you to reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost at home before putting things into the trash can. A few exceptions are when folks drop off car batteries, large appliances, fluorescent tubes, and other items we can't or shouldn't burn. These items are set aside and sent off to be recycled properly. One thing folks might notice in our tipping hall is a large food storage area off to one side. This is where food waste is dropped off once it's been collected at Hanford's, some restaurants, and some schools in northern New England. The food waste is dropped off here and hangs off until there's enough of it to go on an enormous truck, which gets hauled up to Exeter, Maine to be anaerobically digested. This is the process of turning food waste into electricity, animal bedding, and fertilizer by mixing it with cow manure and heating it and churning it for about three weeks. How cool is that? Even with all the food waste and trash inside this large room, you'd think it'd be a pretty smelly place to be. But the neighbors of Ecomaine can't smell us because we have a state-of-the-art negative pressure system, which draws in air all day and all night instead of letting the smelly air waft out. This is our first pollution control method. We deal with the trash just four short miles to downtown Portland, Maine, but you can't see us, hear us, or smell us. But back to the trash talk at hand. Garbage gets pushed through the giant doors that lead to the trash bunker. When full, the bunker holds about 4,000 tons of garbage. Trash is always being moved around and taken up to burn as our facility is constantly working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Trash trucks can only drop off from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday, but inside we work all day and all night every day to keep up with the waste being brought in. Up on the sixth floor, we can see our crane operators hard at work. They have multiple responsibilities. Some of them include aerating the garbage so it burns better, moving the trash away from the door opening so more trash can be pushed in, and finally, bringing trash up to load two hoppers, which feed two boilers, which is where all the garbage is safely burned. The hopper acts like a waiting room, only allowing a little trash in at a time, so everything is burned efficiently, instead of bunching together. Each crane moves a claw, and each claw weighs between two and three tons, and they can hold about three to four tons of garbage with each grab. We have an automatic crane and a manual crane. They can't run into each other because of anti-collision software. Because we want to be as safe as possible, we've installed an infrared camera to watch for fires in the storage area. 
There are also numerous fire cannons which act like giant fire extinguishers. The other cameras here are to keep an eye on all other areas of the facility to make sure it's going well. In the furnace, the fire is burning 24 hours a day. We work to keep the fire temperature regulated. And if the material coming in is too wet from snow or rain, more air is added through the grates in the floor. The air comes from the negative pressure smell pollution system. Occasionally, a little natural gas is added when needed, but for the most part, your trash burns my trash, my trash burns my neighbor's trash, and on and on. All the trash moves slowly down the sloped moving grates inside the boilers because the trash is moved down by hydraulic rams, which look like this. These rams keep trash moving and consistently burning. Once the trash reaches the fire, it burns at about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit for about four hours straight to reach complete combustion, which vastly reduces the amount of air pollution left over. While trash is being burned at Ecomain, a few things are happening. One, the trash is getting smaller by weight and volume because we're turning it into ash. What comes out the other side is about one-tenth the amount that was put into the hopper. For example, 10 tons of trash will be reduced to about one ton of ash. After burning for four hours, we cool off the ash in a water-filled quenching tank for about four more hours before sending the moistened ash on its way to the dump truck by way of conveyor belt. This belt vibrates constantly in order to make the ash spread out into a thin layer, therefore making the metals easily grabbed by a giant rotating drum magnet. Metal is the only thing we pull out post-burn to recycle. These ferrous metals are put in a separate truck next to the ash truck and are sent off to be recycled into steel beams and more. Up to 24,000 pounds or 12 tons of metal are removed from the ash each day. While metals are thrown into a bin by the drum magnet, remaining ash falls straight down and fills up between 8 and 10 dump trucks per day. Trucks then drive to the Eco Main landfill, located just three short miles from our waste to energy facility. Here the ash is laid to rest forever. It is chemically inert, or no longer reacting with oxygen, and therefore not a threat to the environment when it stays within our carefully constructed landfill linings. Be mindful to reduce, reuse, recycle, and compost as much as possible so we don't fill up this landfill too quickly. With more visitors in the summer months, sometimes our bunker becomes too full. In that case, we use a temporary storage cell at our Asheville to hold the waste. Of course, the cell is completely lined and garbage is buried with a thick layer of wood and inert materials to prevent smells and animals from getting into it. Waste is dug up entirely to be burned at the Waste to Energy Facility once there is space in the bunker in the wintertime. If you want to get an idea of how much less trash we put in our landfill now that we can bust it into ash, get a load of this view. The tall hill on the right is about five years of raw trash that we buried between 1978 and 1988 before we built the Waste to Energy Facility. There's even a longer hill behind it with about five more years of trash as well. The low area on the left contained over 30 years of ash that was burned between 1988 and now. Talk about a reduction in size and volume. Another thing about Ecomain's Waste to Energy Facility is that we're self-powered. This brings us to the second byproduct of burning trash, steam. As the waste is burned, the 1800 degree heat converts water that runs through the steel tubes lining the walls of each furnace into steam. A reverse osmosis filter removes any minerals in the water as it comes into our building too. At such high heat, these minerals can degrade the metal in the boiler pipes, so the more pure the water, the longer the pipes last. However, once a year we do shut down the boiler for planned maintenance where we check the thickness of all pipes and replace anything we need to for safety. Once steam is created, it is directed to the turbine generator room. This turbine is connected to an electromagnet with an axle, which makes our generator spin at 3500 revolutions per minute in the process of creating electricity. The hotter the fire, the more steam that is made, and therefore the more electricity is created. Our facility is rated to generate 14 megawatts and we use 10 to 15 percent of the power generated to run our two facilities and our education vehicle, an all-electric Nissan LEAF. The remaining 85 to 90 percent is exported to the power grid where it powers the equivalent of up to 15,000 homes per year. A cooling tower around the back of our facility cools the steam after it goes through the boiler pipes. 
Some of the steam is lost to evaporation and some is condensed back into water and returned to the boiler tubes for an efficient closed loop system. Along with the ash and steam powered electricity, pollution is a third byproduct of burning trash. State of the art pollution control equipment ensures that emissions are well below allowed limits to protect our local environment's health and safety. We call the pollution created from burning trash flue gases and they're treated in four main ways. First, when the gases are created in the fire, urea is sprayed in to render the nitrogen oxides into nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and water through chemical reaction. As the flue gases continue on through the building, they travel through set channels, all the while giving off more heat to create more steam and therefore more electricity. The next pollution control step is spraying in activated carbon to adsorb mercury, dioxins, and furans. To adsorb means to gather together and become inert or no longer dangerous. The flue gases then continue up the scrubber, minus the mercury dioxins and furans, and nitrogen oxides. Lime slurry is sprayed in next to neutralize acidic gases, like sulfur dioxide, through a chemical reaction. EcoMain employees are continuously monitoring pollution levels 24 hours a day in the waste to energy control room to ensure pollution is seamlessly removed and all is taken care of safely. Sensors throughout the facility are also reading every second for many things and changes which are reported back to the control room operators. Finally, a large room containing ionized curtains help remove particulates from the flue gases. Particulates are small particles that we don't want to breathe in or release to the atmosphere. These six charged curtains attract particulates as they move through the room on their way to the stack. And once a curtain is full, it is wrapped on to remove particulates, which then fall down to a cement mixer-like contraption to trap them forever, along with the previously captured mercury dioxins and furans. What's left over after these four pollution controls is about 96% water vapor and a small amount of pollution exiting our stack. We're allowed a certain level of pollution emitted through permits from the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Environmental Protection. With electricity to power our buildings and up to 15,000 homes, clean air coming out of our stack, and 10% of the original trash volume headed to the landfill, EcoMain is doing a stellar job of keeping Maine clean and dealing with residential and commercial waste at the same time. Visit us at ecomain.org to find out more about us, or follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube to learn more every day, too. And finally, feel free to email us at info at ecomain.org with your questions, or to schedule a tour to see our facilities for yourself. Thanks for watching from all of us at EcoMaine.